In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And, and with your spirit. spirit. My dear sisters and brothers, every Friday is a very special day to come before the Lord, to come and celebrate His Holy Eucharist. And uh, this Friday, as we prepare ourselves to do our devotions, I know many of us do the Divine Mercy. Many of us fast, many of us abstain from certain meats or certain practices. And in so doing, we make our Fridays very special, very honorable to our Lord Jesus Christ, remembering His passion and in His death. Let us remember at the Sacred Eucharist all our intentions, especially all those who have asked us to pray for them. Let us pause for a few moments, call to mind our sins, and prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. Together we say, I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O God, who in the abasement of your Son have raised up a fallen world, fill your faithful with holy joy. For on those you have rescued from slavery to sin, you bestow eternal gladness. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Kindly be seated for the readings. A reading from the book of Genesis. In those days, Israel took his journey with all that he had and came to Beersheba and offered sacrifices to the God of his father Isaac. And God spoke to Israel in visions of the night and said, Jacob, Jacob. And he said, Here I am. Then he said, I am God, the God of your father. Do not be afraid to go down to Egypt, for there I will make you into a great nation. I myself will go down with you to Egypt, and I will also bring you up again. And Joseph's hand shall close your eyes. Then Jacob set out from Beersheba. The sons of Israel carried Jacob their father, their little ones and their wives, in the wagons that Pharaoh had sent to carry him. They also took their livestock and their goods, which they had gained in the land of Canaan, and came into Egypt. Jacob and all his offspring with him, his sons and his sons' sons with him, his daughters 
and his son's daughters. All his offspring he brought with him into Egypt. He had sent Judah ahead of him to Joseph to show the way before him in Goshen, and they came into the land of Goshen. Then Jacob prepared his chariot and went up to meet Israel, his father, in Goshen. He presented himself to him and fell on his neck and wept on his neck a good while. Israel said to Joseph, Now let me die, since I have seen your face and know that you are still alive. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to, to God. God. Our response to the psalm is, From the Lord comes the salvation of the just. Kindly repeat. From the Lord comes the salvation of the just. Trust in the Lord and do good. Then you will dwell in the land and safely pasture. Find your delight in the Lord who grants your heart's desire. Response. From the Lord comes the salvation of the just. The Lord takes note of the days of the blameless. Their heritage will last forever. They shall not be put to shame in evil days. In time of famine, they shall have their fill. Response, from the Lord comes the salvation of the just. Then turn away from evil and do good, and you may abide forever. For indeed, the Lord loves justice and will never forsake his faithful. Response, from the Lord comes the salvation of the just. But from the Lord comes the salvation of the just, their stronghold in time of distress. The Lord helps them and rescues them, rescues and saves them from the wicked, because they take refuge in him. Response, from the Lord comes the salvation of the just. Kindly stand for the gospel. Alleluia, alleluia. When the Spirit of Truth comes, He will guide you into all the truth and bring to your remembrance all that I have said to you. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And, and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. At the time, Jesus said to His disciples, Behold, I am sending you out as sheep in the midst of wolves, so be wise as serpents and innocent as doves. Beware of men, for they will deliver you over to councils and flog you in their synagogues, and you will be dragged before governors and kings for my sake, to bear witness before them and the Gentiles. When they deliver you over, do not be anxious how you are to speak or what you are to say, for what you are to, be, to say will be given to you in that hour. For it is not you who speak, but the Spirit of your Father speaks through you. Brother will deliver brother over to death, and the father his child, and children will rise against parents and have them put to death, and you will be hated by all for my name's sake. But the one who endures to the end will be saved. When they persecute you in one town, flee to the next. For truly, I say to you, you will not have gone through all the towns of Israel before the Son of Man comes. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear sisters and brothers, you and myself, we are not alien to evil in this world. In some minuscule amount or in some large proportions, we have encountered evil as much as we have encountered God, perhaps. If nothing else, then we have encountered evil in this, in, in, in the global sense. We see poverty, we see corruption, we see people in need, we see oppression. And we feel that this is wrong. We know. And sometimes we can't even bear to notice it or to see it. And sometimes we can't even do anything about it. Or we see injustice, we see corruption in our own workplaces or our schools and colleges, injustice being done. And perhaps the worst kind of evil we face with our own kit and kin, in our own families sometimes, or our extended families, we find people who are supposed to be for us. But for some reason, they are totally against us. They don't understand us. 
and so on and so forth. My dear friends, the readings of today, if, you, if we've paid attention, are offering us, offering a disciple of Christ, ways in which we can cope when we are faced with evil. And uh, this, this morning before you, I'd like to place just four very simple ones. The first one is, so how to face evil as a Christian or till the vindication and, or salvation of the Lord comes to us, how is a Christian supposed to bear through evil? The first thing is, we need to reorient ourselves to the vision of God. Very beautifully we see in the first reading, uh, the story, the very famous story of the patriarch Joseph. And very often we know Joseph was oppressed, uh, almost killed by his own brothers, betrayed by his own brothers. And we know the plight that Joseph goes through finally to rise up uh, almost the right hand of, the, uh, of Pharaoh. But in this entire story, there is one person who is in the background who also suffers a lot. And that is Joseph's father, Jacob, or Israel, his name given by Yahweh. Jacob's suffering is so much because he doesn't even know his son is alive. He thinks his son is absolutely dead. He doesn't even know that his own children, the other kids, have killed or tried to kill Joseph. And this journey that now Jacob is making, Israel is making, to go out of Egypt, he's not the happiest with it because it is famine in his own, in Cana, it's, it's a famine there, this land which God has promised. So he's upset, he's sad to leave this land. But you see that no matter what his personal preferences is or his personal understanding that God has promised this land, he is ready to go to Egypt because he reorients himself to the vision of God. And we see that in the dream that he gets, in the vision that he gets. So my dear friends, when we are oppressed with evil too, if we are able to once again reorient with what God sees, with how God sees the situation, not you and I, then we will be reunited once more with our loved ones. We'll be reunited once more with justice, just as Jacob was reunited with Joseph. The second aspect uh, when we are facing evil is after we reorient ourselves, remind ourselves of God's promises to us, of the vision of God, is what the psalm tells us. And the psalm tells us very simply, trust in the Lord and do good. And perhaps when we are going through an oppression, or we are innocently suffering, the hardest thing is to do good. Because our logic or our understanding is these evil people, they are doing the wrong things and still prospering. So why not me? Why can't I prosper? Even I can do the evil that they do. But I'm still suffering and I'm not prospering. And so very often good people, faithful people, give up the quest for good in the face of evil. And what the Lord is simply saying, it's as easy as this, just trust in the Lord and continue to do good. If we only trust in the Lord, but don't do anything, we don't do good, then I think our trust is, is misinformed. It's not true trust. It's not absolute trust in the Lord. But that's what the psalmist is in, in enlightening, enlightening us with, is encouraging us with, that no matter what the others do, our decisions to do good, to someone, to a good person, to a not so good person, should be dependent on trust in God and God alone. And he will vindicate us. The third one is what we listen to in the gospel of today. Uh, the third one is to be wise as well as to be innocent. To be doves as well as to be sharp like snakes or serpents, as, the, as Matthew tells us. The gospel of Matthew that we hear from chapter 10 is, very, is a very beautiful section of Matthew's gospel. It is known as the missionary discourse. So chapter 10 begins with Jesus sending the 12 out on mission and a little later he will give them instructions like, listen, this is how you will do mission in my name. So you will carry the minimum, etc, etc, etc. He gives them a list of bullet points to do. And then comes this section where Jesus immediately warns them saying that when you go out on mission, it's, don't expect it to be rosy because you're going out in my name and in my power. It doesn't mean that everyone is going to fall in line. Everyone is going to follow you. You're going to probably get, get great success. But he says you're going to meet all sorts of people. And when you meet them, including your own family, brother against brother, father against children, children against parents, when you meet such kind of people, be wise as serpents and innocent as doves. Many of us perhaps think and use this sentence or this passage as a, 
as a justification if our family relations are not the best you know see jesus is saying that for his sake uh, you know my family is against me but it's very important to note that what jesus is saying here is that whenever we make a choice for god above any human person even if it's our own family then if they are against us god will somehow bring back the union that was taken away because of whatever we did and so we should never pick a fight with someone just and justify it that jesus is saying this but if ever we do something or a vocation comes to us something strong that we know comes from god then even if our family is against us eventually god will win them over god will convince them but you and i must do the the will of god and as we do it no matter different kinds of people and persecution comes the lord the spirit of the lord will help us be wise and help us continue to be innocent even amidst evil and the last and perhaps the hardest thing to do in the face of evil is to weep on the shoulders of a loved one when we go through evil it's painful it's not easy nobody expects you to smile when you are uh, being nailed on the cross but the lord as much as people are against us will also send those people and shoulders broad shoulders of those people on whose uh, on whose shoulders we can cry and this beautiful scene we see at the end of uh, our first reading of today where uh, uh, jacob presented himself uh, to uh, to his father and his father fell on his neck and wept on his neck for a good while believe me there is no better source of healing than this exchange of love uh, that we that we just hear and so if you are going through a difficult time god has also sent someone to console you to be with you do not reject the the company of that person the comfort of that person Blessed are you Lord God of all creation for through your goodness we have received this bread we offer you fruit of the earth and work of human hands it will become for us the bread of life blessed be God forever Blessed are you Lord God of all creation for through your goodness we have received this wine we offer you fruit of the wine and work of human hands it will become for us our spiritual drink blessed be God forever Pray my dear sisters and brothers that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the almighty father may the lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name for our good and the good of all his holy church may this oblation dedicated to your name purify us o lord and day by day bring our conduct closer to the life of heaven through christ our lord amen the lord be with you and with, with your spirit lift up your hearts we lift, lift them up to the, the lord. lord let us give thanks to the lord our god it, it is right and just it is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks lord holy father almighty and eternal god through christ our lord his death we celebrate in love his resurrection we confess with living faith and his coming in glory we await with unwavering hope and so with all the angels and saints we praise you as without end we acclaim holy 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 lord god of hosts heaven and earth are full of your glory hosanna 
Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion. He took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Cardinal Oswald, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be coerced to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, 
as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the, For the kingdom, kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give to you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And, and with your spirit. Let us offer one another the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. We now make our spiritual communion with the Lord. O Lord Jesus, since I cannot now receive you in your sacramental presence, I beg you to come spiritually into my soul, to enrich me with your holy grace, and make me truly your own forever. O Jesus, living in Mary, come and live in me in the spirit of your holiness in the fullness of your power, in the communion of your mysteries, in the perfection of your ways. O Divine Guest, give to my soul a strong, lively faith, an unbounded trust, perfect humility, an abiding sorrow for my sins, a total abandonment to your Divine Will, and a perfect loving union with you in mind and heart. O Sacrament Most Holy, O Sacrament Divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment Thine. Lord Jesus, thank You for the blessings and graces You have given me through this spiritual communion. Come to me, all who labour and are burdened, and I will refresh you, says the Lord. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that having been replenished by such great gifts, we may gain the prize of salvation and never cease to praise you. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Wishing you all a very happy, a very blessed and a very prayerful Friday. Prayer for relief from the coronavirus. Almighty and merciful God, who show your love to all creation everywhere, hear graciously the prayers we make for all those affected by the coronavirus in various parts of the world. We come before you asking for an efficacious control of the outbreak, for a healing of those affected, for the victims and their families. We thank you for blessing the efforts of our research scientists working on the development of a vaccine. We pray that these vaccines will be effective in combating the virus and its mutants and in controlling the spread of the pandemic and be available to all. We pray for doctors, nurses, and health workers who are in the front line of this battle, that they be kept safe and have the strength and courage to continue their heroic efforts. We pray for the government and health authorities that they take appropriate steps for the good of the people. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. 
Greater love and friendship Has no man than this That he die for others Give his life for all No more are you servants I have called you friends To me, I may know to you. Without you, I am nothing. My weakness needs your strength. So speak, Lord, to your servants. I'm waiting for your word. Have you seen? My people, have you heard their cry? Do you know their suffering? Can you let them die? Break the unjust fetter, set the captive free. Without you I am nothing My weakness needs your strength So speak, Lord, to your servants I'm waiting for your word